Hello everyone, it's Boss. Shall we study? The Gauss's law. For studying the concept of the law, you should know about what is line of electric force. Well, first, let's suppose that there is a positive charge. Then, the electric field of this charge affects its position everywhere around it, right? Uh, then, if there is a closed surface which doesn't have any holes, like this, the closed surface contains this positive charge. And at this situation, the lines of electric force pass this surface. Now, we may define the quantity of lines, which is called flux, that defined as surface integral. Yeah, it's the double integral of minute superficial content. Oh, well, if you don't know well about this surface integral, you could always leave some comments and ask about this concept. I will reply on them. Well, minute superficial content could be drawn like this. Then let's suppose the situation that a vector called line of electric force passes this minute surface and the unit normal vector of the surface could be drawn like this. And let's match each starting point, each starting point of vectors and the angle between electric vector and normal vector is theta. Then, the inner product. The inner product of those two vectors means projection of electric vector to normal vector. Uh, with this concept, these concepts, let me draw a charge whose quantity is plus q. And as you can see, there is closed surface. In addition, this surface is a ball, ball whose radius is r. Then we may calculate, we may calculate the surface integral whose name is flux. As Coulomb's law, the electric field is expressed like this and minute superficial content of the ball is the square of r sin theta d theta d phi. Yeah, in spherical coordinate system. And the normal vector of the ball is the unit vector, which is the direction of the radius. Oh, the square of r is eliminated. So the formula becomes this. As we know, theta ranges 0 to pi, and phi ranges 0 to 2 pi. So the result of this calculation is q divided by epsilon. Wow, we got the equality with definition of flux. Then let's see, this equality means the flux inside a closed surface is as same as this result, right? Well, actually, no matter how we select a closed surface, the result of flux is as same as Q, which is charge inside the closed surface, divided by epsilon, regardless of the form of the closed surface. And people call this Gaussian surface. People call this surface Gaussian surface. For another example, another example, a cube. It is okay. And the other example, a cloud that doesn't have any holes. Yes, 
referring to definition of flux. Referring to, to definition of flux, we can realize that flux will pass the cloud like this. Um, if there is a hole on cloud, the quantity of flux will be measured less than the result of the situation with closed surface. Right, because there is a hole on cloud. However, closed surface, like this picture drawn on this, uh, well, this white paper, yeah, so the quantity of flux will be measured uh, less than the result of situation with closed surface if there is a hole on cloud. However, without a hole, any hole on cloud, the result is the plus Q divided by epsilon. Anyway, as we saw a procedure of calculating the flux few minutes ago, we know that the ball is the most proper form of closed surface for us to calculate the integral formula much more easily, at least with this point charge. So, regardless of how big the size of charge is, if the quantity of charge is same, each other, each other the result of flux is also same. And as I told you, the form of charge is never important. Never important, the form of charge. And we can select the closed surface, whose name is Gaussian surface, like this, to measure how much charge is in the closed surface. Wow, finally, we realize why this equality is useful to measure of measure the quantity of charge yes right if you have any questions you can always leave the comment and let me finish this video thanks